Welcome to Vice Casting Couch, Season 1, Episode 19. I'm Ryan, and joining me is John. Today we're going to be talking about updates to the Capital One and Twitter hack, as well as vulnerabilities found in the OkCupid uh, dating app. How are you doing, John? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm swell. <laughs> it's been a slow yeah. so it's been good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, do you, want, <laughs> you want to start? Uh, sure. So, OkCupid. Okay, Cupid, uh, their dating app, there's been some flaws found in it by uh, some researchers um, that could potentially let attackers remotely spy on like, users' private information or perform uh, various different malicious actions on behalf of the targeted accounts. Um, so the researchers from Checkpoint, they found that they could craft um, requests and send them so they can steal like the user's authentication tokens and user IDs other sensitive information such as email addresses, preferences, sexual orientation, and some other private data that they didn't elaborate on. They shared it with OkCupid and it is fixed and they did state that not a single user was impacted by this. But the flaw is kind of interesting. They were reverse engineering um, the Android app uh, version 40.3.1 which was released on April 29th and they found that how OkCupid okay, implements some of its actions in the app. It uses these deep links, um, which enables a bad actor to uh, customize it, and it would let the app manifest a file and open a web browser for JavaScript to be enabled. From there, you can get the user's cookies, and there's some other flaws that they found that also enabled cross-site uh, scripting attacks, so they can inject this malicious JavaScript with that, because they have the user's cookies and they have all this JavaScript and everything, attacker controlled server where this JavaScript's responding to can then steal your profile information, authentication tokens, user preferences, and transmit all this back to the attacker server. And then they can tell your device to go to this, there's this GraphQL um, website on OkCupid, and then they didn't can fetch all the information, your email address, all that stuff that, um, listed before like you know sexual orientation height family status yada 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 okay so all right so i mean the the only kind of i guess dangerous part of it is it can grab your email yeah it's more just a privacy no it can grab like your address your email address your sexual orientation your height family status personal preferences like gotcha, you know okay. it's a dating app so whatever you put on a dating app it could pretty much get access to okay yeah okay gotcha Similar to the Ashley Madison, but not quite as uh, <laughs> as There's in-depth, some parallels, but um, yeah, um, so it wouldn't be able to be implemented um, in amass as much information as Ashley Madison as this gotcha. kind of requires, like the target individuals. From my understanding of of reading the article, okay. where Ashley Madison they hacked it and downloaded a whole database. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, but I mean, they could still release like who was on the site though i guess or sell the emails oh yeah they could if if someone really did it but it looks like it only affects the android app so i'm not sure and it has been patched now so they they claim no one was affected and you they know, say you know who knows <laughs> <laughs> i mean i'm just saying in the past we've seen a lot of companies that either don't say anything or kind of downplay what happened um <laughs> in an attempt to kind of save face much like much like Capital One after they got hacked. Oh, you want to talk about Paige Thompson? Yeah, Capital One. yeah. <laughs> you got the hint. <laughs> so, uh, um, this is just a quick update. Nothing crazy happened, but uh, basically, the United States regulators um, they fined Capital One with eighty million dollars um, because of last year's data breach that exposed personal information of more than a hundred million credit card applicants of Americans. Um, fine was imposed by the Office of Comptroller of, of the Currency. Um, it's an independent bureau within the United States Department of Treasury that governs the execution of laws retaining, uh, relating to national banks. So in the press release, they say Capital One failed to establish an uh, appropriate risk management before migrating its IT operations to Amazon's uh, cloud-based service, AWS. Yeah which included you know, appropriate design implementation and network security controls and adequate loss prevention. Um, they, they go down the line basically saying Capital One messed up and 
ultimately, as, as we've gone over the story before, Paige Thompson did not use very, um, what's the word, complicated or, yeah. you know, <laughs> very technical attacks. It yeah, was very, not at all. it was quite easy. <laughs> Just found a vulnerable um, admin computer. <laughs> exactly. So with that, you know, they, they go on to mention that they, there was also, they failed to patch security vulnerabilities and they violated these um, inter-agency guidelines establishing information security standards, which all U.S. banks must comply with. Yeah. So I think really that's the main thing about the fine right there. Um, like I said, 106 million Capital One customers were affected, mm -hmm. 140,000 social security numbers um, were leaked and 80,000 bank account numbers also, yeah. some Canadian social insurance numbers, about 1 million of those were leaked. Yeah, I was going to um, say it was international. Um, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty big. Of, <laughs> you got a lot of info and then just stored it on her server in her bedroom. <laughs> yeah, as we said, Paige Thompson, she was, what, 33? Um, yeah. She was arrested following the breach and charged with computer fraud and abuse. That's pretty much it. I was just saying how basically, you know, some companies are actually getting repercussions for stuff they do. It seems like a lot of them get away, but this is one of the few times. Um, it, yeah. Most of the time, it seems like with banks, they get they get fined at least. Yeah, well, yeah, they're kind of, I guess, held it to a higher standard, I guess. But I'm not really sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it definitely does seem like they, most companies get away with a slap on the wrist. Um especially when you kind of break down what they get fined. Uh, I know we brought it up in the past where they'll get fined like, you know, $80 million or something like that. But then you look at how much they actually earn a year and it's like a drop in the bucket to what, <laughs> to their, their like yearly revenue. So it doesn't really mean much. Um, kind of like the um, uh, YouTube getting fined and stuff like that. Uh, you know, they got fined millions and millions of dollars, but in the grand scheme of things, they're making billions of dollars a year. So it, doesn't really affect them too much it's just kind of like a more of a, a some, uh... bad press oh yeah this is a slap on a wrist apparently in 2018 capital one made a 28 billion dollars <laughs> so, uh, okay. 80 million's uh, nothing i guess it is a slap on a wrist this just further proves our point like yeah <laughs> you can misconfigure stuff and leak a bunch of information and they're just like oh bad bad you can potentially devastate people's lives <laughs> that they have to mm. crawl back from for years if their credit is ruined and uh yep they get you know they get fined a, a week's worth of income basically <laughs> so that's it's that's probably a couple know. days honestly like yeah I, yeah capital I mean, one's a huge bank you know like, yeah yeah they have know. their fingers in a lot of pies um if you want to hear a more uh for at least the beginning of the story um, since this is an update, we have a whole episode on that uh, previously. Um, if you just look for Capital One, that'll pop up. But that's definitely a good, uh, I mean, what is it, almost a, or over a year later, I think now. Yeah, it's, it's been over a year. Yeah, they finally, you know, I guess, <laughs> something happened, I guess. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't even call that like a, a punishment or repercussion. Like this kind of just... <laughs> The government well, doing something about it, I guess. There could be more going on behind the scene. I'm surprised there's not like some clash action lawsuits or anything like that. Um, yeah, that's true. I guess it's just this one office in the Treasury saying like, oh, yeah, you failed to adhere to these standards that are set out for all banks to follow. We're yeah. going to fine you for that. So there so, could be more fines on its way and, you yeah, know, potentially okay. uh, other repercussions for Capital One. I mean, We're hopefully, because sure. as you said, it wasn't very complicated. Uh, for Thompson to get in so it was kind of a stupid mistake to begin with um, it wasn't like a whole lot of effort went into it uh, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, yeah something uh, more should definitely be done uh, in my opinion anyways you have an update on uh, Twitter as well yeah just a quick update so as everyone knows uh, what, a couple weeks ago uh, a lot of high profile Twitter users were hacked so like stuff like Warren Buffett, Barack Obama, Kanye West, yeah. uh, Bill Gates, you know, big, big people, Elon Musk. And basically it was something along the lines was posted. Um, a lot of people have been asking me to give back. So here's my chance. Give me a thousand dollars and I'll send you back two thousand dollars. Kind of a, a modern evolution of the Nigerian prince email yeah. scam. Yep. Um, but three people have been arrested. Uh, Mason Shepard, a.k.a. Shaywan, who's 19, he's from the United Kingdom. Uh, there's uh, Nima 
Fazley, aka Rolex, is his screen name. He's 22 from Florida. And then a 17 year old named Graham Clark, uh, who was arrested in Tampa Bay, Florida, according to a local Florida news channel. Um, he's a wow. juvenile, so there hasn't been too much released about him, but yeah. has been reported that he's being charged with 30 felonies of communications and organized fraud. Um, mm. There's also some stuff in here about money laundering, I guess, because of the, the Bitcoin. And, uh, and here it just kind of says like they've amassed over a hundred thousands of dollars in Bitcoin just because people fell for it. You know, yeah. all these people were posting at the same time is very orchestrated. Mm-hmm. And they further go on to say that because of the whole um, pandemic, um, a lot of Twitter, Twitter employees have been having to work from home. Yeah. Um, and with that, they also have access to the internal tools they need to do their job. Um, so they did a social engineering and a spear phishing attack, which gave them these unauthorized access to these uh, internal tools that then allowed them to post on all, all these people. Um, 130 user accounts were targeted. Of those, 45 were the verified accounts, you know, with the check mark, which is yeah. like, hey, that's actually that real person, Barack yeah. Obama, that's, that's really <laughs> you, you know. Um, and then it did say that there was access to these direct messages inboxes of at least 36 of the accounts and okay. only eight of the accounts had the download your Twitter data tool was used. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Which lets you download your whole like Twitter profile essentially. Gotcha. So yeah, as we mentioned in the other episode, this wasn't, uh, this wasn't very well thought out then. <laughs> it seems like anyways, I'm saying, you know, I would have just ran off to Belize and had me a hundred thousand dollars in Bitcoin. I mean, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, it seems like they, they kind of just did it, and then that was it. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, they didn't. As far as I know, they didn't release how exactly they, uh, like, what the emails were or anything like that. Like, how much effort they actually put into this. Um, it- you know, this is a continuously evolving story. I just figured I'd mention that three people were arrested, and yeah. there there is on different charges: conspiracy to commit wire fraud, conspiracy to commit money laundering, you know, computer fraud and abuse, all kinds of stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. well, at least yeah, that's that's some more good news. That's that's some actual good news. <laughs> <laughs> at least they weren't fined like you know five bucks or something. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, are you excited about the uh, theaters opening back up? Nah, man, I'm 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 just gonna stay inside. You know, <laughs> I, I got my directional antenna. I can steal Wi-Fi from other people. Oh my word! <laughs> <laughs> you probably shouldn't say that. Out of here. I mean, I mean, uh, um, allegedly. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I do re- research and see what uh, protocols are being used. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, yeah. uh, don't come after us. <laughs> but I mentioned that because uh, I came across this article saying that AMC is going to charge 15 cents for tickets uh, starting August 20th. Uh, they're opening up, I believe, a third of their theaters again. Uh, if anyone hasn't seen this yet. Uh, so yeah, the tickets will go on sale for 15 cents. Kind of, a, I guess, a throwback to how much it cost when they first opened in the early 1900s. I'm sure the concessions will still require a mortgage, but the tickets will be cheap. So <laughs> if you want to get out of the house uh, and if you're able to, then maybe go to the movies for 15 cents. Do they say anything about their uh, stay at home options? Or... Uh, how do you mean? Like streaming? Well, I've heard, I haven't done too much research, but like um, movies right now, like, you know, most of the time they get released in the theaters, there's all this hype, people go to the, the movies, but a lot of yeah. people are still either um, lo- a lockdown of some sort, or they, or they really still don't feel as comfortable to going out to these movies right now. So I know people have been trying to find like ways to release new movies for people at home. Um, like I yeah. think Frozen 2 was released on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh, uh, a couple companies have done that, uh, namely Disney and all their new movies that they've come out with. Um, they've they've stuck on Google Plus, which brings up another topic as well um, with the kind of failing movie theater industry. Um, there are so many streaming services now. I I don't know how theaters are going to come back from this. 
Um, I know a lot of people like the the big screen um, for like movies that they want to see, you know, when they first come out and all that stuff. And they don't want to wait for them to like go to DVD and stuff like that. Myself included. Um, there's there's a few uh, like movies that are coming out in 2021 that I'll probably go to the theater to watch. But there are so many streaming services now. I mean, Amazon and Netflix have been around for a while now. I mean, now you have Disney Plus, you have HBO, you know, Hulu. Um, NVIDIA has their own streaming service now uh, that you can buy movies from and stuff like that. I saw a really good video. I think it was by a uh, film theorist. And he was talking about the, the kind of failing uh, movie industry. And they charge so much for tickets and concessions because they're like hemorrhaging money <laughs> because they, that doesn't quite cover the cost of these movies that are coming out. Um, so I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what theaters do. I mean, obviously we're we're seeing this kind of an incentive for you to go, but I, w- I wonder how they're gonna um, they're gonna do in the future. Once I mean, now people are pretty used to staying in their homes, watching you know streaming services and stuff like that. Um, and home theater systems have come way down in price. I mean, you can get a, you know, a 50 inch flat screen TV and like a surround sound for under, you know, 800 bucks. Um, I don't know. It'll, it'll be interesting to see, uh, what they do to, to try to bounce back. Yeah, man. I I would, the one thing I was going to say, not trying to get uh, too off topic is I'm I'm surprised we haven't seen the resurgence and like, uh, drive-in movie theaters, you know? Um, so I thought about that as well. Um, cause, uh, I, w- I mean, I would rather prefer to, you know, sit in the comfort of my car and watch a movie. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> the problem with that though, is the sound quality. Cause usually like the old drive-in theaters and stuff, you like clip down a little speaker into your car. Right. Um, mm-hmm. but you didn't really get, you know, when you go to the theater and they have, you know, the Adobe surround sound or, I don't know. I, I guess that would kind of take away from the movie theater experience, in my opinion. I don't know. What do, what do you think? Like, for me, that would be a huge detractor. If I went to the if I went to the movies and the sound was coming out of a freaking like Bluetooth speaker on my dash. Well, so I, I know in a lot of the uh, newer um, drive-in theaters, they use a FM transmitter, mm-hmm. um, and that way you just tune to the the fm station honestly man I'm, I'm not trying to sound like you know maybe i sound broke when i say this but my car probably has the best sound quality of anything i own um <laughs> you know i get in there and I listen to some rick ross or ricky rose you know like, i mean i'm okay. sorry i just start jamming out like. fair enough i mean if you have okay if you have a a, a nice sound system in your car i i could see that um this is stock i've i've done no modifications or nothing well i guess it depends on your whatever super is doing (laughs) i guess it depends on your standards for me uh you know obviously most people have experienced the sound quality of going to the theater for me it would be a huge detractor i mean maybe not i guess there's people that would agree with you that that it's not really a a huge you know problem if it just comes through your your car speakers rather than like a, a fully surround sound uh, experience, but well, imagine Billy. You know, he got two 15 inch subs in his like trunk. He can just roll up to the thing and uh, blast everyone's like you know windshields out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> okay, that would be a reason not to go for me. <laughs> no, that's a reason to go. But you get that whole like you know 40 hertz rumble of like the transformer transforming. And you oh yeah, feel that. <laughs> <laughs> the the 4d effects of your windshield glass hitting your face <laughs> exactly that's what I'm talking. you get the realistic scratch simulation from the glass exploding and, um. oh my word <laughs> yeah uh yeah no that's a that's a no for me <laughs> um, all right everyone tune in for uh john's drive-in no, my being God. released uh, two weeks from now. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, though, kind of on the same theme as, theme as drive-ins, um, I have seen that like YouTube watch parties and stuff are becoming or have become, I guess, more popular. Um, so if we're going to talk about watch parties, a lot of um, streaming services are getting on a bit. I know Amazon has a watch party capability. Hulu has a watch party um capability oh, really? if okay. if you have a plex server um certain devices like roku's and fire sticks are yeah. capable of 
having a watch party. So basically a watch party for people who don't know is it, it syncs up the video. So multiple people will join and then mm. when everyone's ready, you click go and it syncs up the video. And then say if Jim has to run off to like the bathroom or get snacks or something, he could pause it and it pauses it for everyone. So you don't have this like, you know, on the phone, three, two, one, go trying to sync it up. It <laughs> automatically syncs it up for you. Yeah. And, um, it, I've used it before, um, and it, I think it's fantastic. I used it with Plex, and Plex mm-hmm. is really good. I like their implementation. I haven't used Hulu yet or Amazon, but yeah. um, I hope it's a feature that sticks around because honestly, it's you know there's so many apl- applications you know for this to be used. It definitely is a unique perspective on like movie watching. You know, instead of either going to the theater together or watching it separately at home, ask someone if they want to watch it with you, and you just click play and there you go <laughs> and you're watching the same thing at the same time it definitely is a um yeah it's it's a good feature um i haven't tried it uh but i you included i i know several people who have and they they love it they use it all the time but i don't know well, there's just so many applications like say if you're on a business trip or like for our troops that are deployed you know and yeah. say they have some free time they could hey you know you could, with the kids you guys want to watch like a movie and then you, it's synced up and you could just maybe facetime with your phone over here or something and then yeah. like it kind of gets that whole like immersive experience like it's pretty seamless and makes it a lot easy for, no it's definitely for true. everyone that's a i guess another uh nail in the coffin for movie theaters <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you can basically I, I, look, man once I can recreate the uh, movie theater popcorn at home i'm never going back to a theater <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can what are you talking about it's not that hard. Well, I haven't figured it out yet. I'm over here like got two pounds of butter melted in a pot, <laughs> and I just got <laughs> <laughs> got a pound of cholesterol. <laughs> exactly. You know, the popcorn is like all shriveled up and just soaked. Like. <laughs> I've had I've been able to recreate pretty close to to movie theater popcorn because you can get you can get the the fake butter stuff that they that they use. You can buy that from. I mean. I think Walmart has it. They have like the synthetic uh, butter alternative or whatever the crap it's called. I mean, it's, it's basically plastic, but whatever. Um, <laughs> I mean, That's it's the best plastic I've ever had, <laughs> let me tell you. It is good, though. I'll give you that. Uh, and I also got the little, uh, you know, little shakers that they have, like the ranch and the nacho cheese, like powder. Oh, that's, yeah. And like the garlic parmesan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That stuff's real good. I like that. Yeah, I've gotten pretty close to recreating it. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll invite you over sometime when you're. You kind of you mentioned Walmart. You know, do you want to talk about Walmart Plus and the what it could bring to the table potentially, or should we wait for another episode? That's a pretty. I, th- I think we could go more in depth um, uh, on okay. a different episode because um, that's. I, I haven't heard too much about it. Yeah, I, I I feel like there's a lot there that we could go into. So yeah, we can definitely bring that up on probably in the next episode. Uh, we can look it up. Oh, and Elon Musk's uh, Starlink kind of sucks. <laughs> Does it? I saw there was a beta program people could sign up for. Yeah, it's. And I was kind of interested in. So the beta users, um, they were getting download speeds speeds ranging from 11 megabits to 60, uh, which isn't terrible, but that's not much hey, that's better. Better than some dial up, like. I, I'm, <laughs> okay, I mean, <laughs> it's better than a lot of things, but it's not great. Uh, it's basically on par with any other satellite distributor that I've come across, really. Um, it, we were talking earlier about where I live. There's pretty much only one fiber backbone going to uh, where I live, and the only other option is satellite. From there, I well, was... did it talk about the latency? Because I know he was trying to cut down um, latency a lot. Yeah, they said it's 31 megaseconds uh, or milliseconds to 94 for ping latencies. Isn't that great either? It's not terrible, but. Yeah, it's just I don't know. It doesn't seem that great. And again, this is this is beta testing. So I I hope it does get better because if it does at least reach like a hundred megabits, I mean they promised a gig, which is huge. <laughs> I I don't know if I don't know if they're gonna get that anytime soon with satellite and Wi-Fi. That's that's a huge ask. But anyway, they said that they would eventually get to a gig, or at least that's what was rumored um, from from Elon Musk. But right now it's it's sitting between eleven to sixty megabits, so I don't know how they're gonna improve improve that to a gig in the next like I don't know couple years at least. I don't know. I hope they do because I think it would be pretty great. I haven't seen anything about um, how much it actually costs. 
because again, it is still in beta testing, so they haven't released a whole lot. I, I hope they succeed because I would definitely like to uh, not pay one company and be stuck with them forever. <laughs> if if I could get a gigabit <laughs> download from satellite Wi-Fi, that would be nice. Yeah, I got to deal with Comcast, man. Oof. Bruh. Bro, they're like the freaking dinosaur of the Wi-Fi industry. <laughs> They're the only option in a lot of these states, man. Yeah. Like, um, no, no. I don't... The, only, the only other uh, company around here is uh, CenturyLink, and they're DSL, and they're a lot slower than <laughs> <laughs> I thought about it. Yeah, I don't I thought know about how... just having both. <laughs> it's just both at the same time. Double your speed. Well, yeah, one's cable, one's DSL. <laughs> I can just have two lines, you know. I mean, okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> i don't think that's how that works but okay <laughs> it is it is how it works man so you're going to combine them together well yeah if you got like a load balancing router some applications would use it but other other ones wouldn't unless you had like some kind of reverse proxy or something but you know quickly want to uh, mention about spacex really quick um, but apparently the uh, u.s air force tested it with spacex and they were able to get uh, where's the uh, uh, 610 megabits per second data link uh, from Starlink to uh, a C-12 aircraft in flight. Oh, wow. So I just All found right. that, and that, that was in 2019. So I think there is hope for uh, uh, Elon's vision. You know, one, one thing a lot of people don't mess with is like Elon. They might call him crazy, but <laughs> look at Tesla stock right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and not mention the other dozen companies of his. Hey, look at SpaceX, man. That didn't they, do they, so well. <laughs> SpaceX is doing fine. All right. I mean, yeah. Okay. I'm. You know, I just respect the vision. I respect what this man's doing. And uh, I'm just interested on in what comes out of it. Um, I don't really. You don't, you don't mess him, with. But... You don't mess with Bezos. You don't mess with Zuck. <laughs> and you don't mess with Musk. Like, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> oh my goodness. I mean, tell me how all those people short in Tesla stock are doing. I'm just curious. You know, all those people that were short in Tesla stock. Yeah. Let me let me know how they're doing right now. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure they're doing fine. I guess. I don't know. I'm nah, just interested. <laughs> I, I'm just interested to in see what it comes out with. If it's a good product, I am, I am excited for Starlink. So we'll see yeah. what happens. Like, I don't uh, care about Musk at all. If he decided to retire tomorrow, I wouldn't really care. But. I am excited to see uh, what he actually comes out with and what like what products I can actually use. Um, well, so I would be curious to see um, as there's actually a DEF CON talk. So DEF CON was canceled, the in-person uh, cybersecurity event, but they mm -hmm. put all the videos and stuff online. And um, oh, okay. there's a PhD student, I forget his name, but he was actually able to take $300 of off-the-shelf like um, – television equipment because uh satellite internet and satellite tv they they use the same standards and so he's able to plug it into his computer and so when you talk up to the satellite it's in a wide beam because the satellite doesn't know your exact position yeah but it knows the exact position of the ground station so it does a a, a focus beam to that but when it responds back once the information comes back you can like kind of one-sidedly hear part of the conversation and he was able to get tons of information about s p 500 you know firms and lawyers who were like using satellite not maritime vessels and all kinds of stuff so it's a Jeez. really interesting um, talk if y'all want we can link it in the description um, yeah for sure so he's able to what eavesdrop on it yeah he was just able to eavesdrop because honestly a lot of the stuff from what he was saying is in plain text like it's there's no wow. encryption uh, by default and windmills, you know, like the satellite, uh, not satellite, the wind, the wind turbines that yep. are in the fields. Yep. Um, a lot of times these are placed there, but they have no infrastructure to connect up to them. So they can't manage them. Mm -hmm. So they just use satellite and he was able, he was able to access like um, admin consoles for those. So he can like do some configurations if he wanted to and all Jeez. kinds of stuff. Like, <laughs> so I'll have to send the link. So quick. you use a VPN. <laughs> <laughs> always 100 or the it, it brings up a better conversation is um wireless communication should be encrypted by default yeah um, no i agree because once you broadcast it anyone can listen to it if it's a wire you can argue that you know unless someone has physical access to the wire and yada yada but yeah. wireless like with especially with the advent of software-defined radio and 
all this cheaper stuff bringing it into um, the reach of the common man like we're yeah. finding exploits left and right you know it's well it's yeah kind of crazy you can, you can protect a wire a lot easier than you can you know stop someone from accessing <laughs> your radio waves <laughs> exactly it's kind of yeah. impossible so you have to encrypt it or do something to try to keep people out <laughs> but yeah no i definitely agree um and to an encryption on especially freaking satellites because there's a lot of there's a lot of extremely important infrastructures that use satellite communication i mean in the government in the military um like like you just said managing a uh, huge energy infrastructure like that's kind of a it's kind of a big deal <laughs> <laughs> oh nah, um, man small small stuff oh yeah 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 small potatoes i mean especially with everything going on in the world i mean yeah that could be a that could be a huge deal let's just say i i, I don't want that to be a topic in the future <laughs> of uh china hacking uh u.s infrastructure through satellites that would be uh not something i would want to talk about i think there's actually something done where they tried to uh what's the word i'm looking for they, they pretty much the, i think the air force opened it or the space force opened it up for like um people to try and hack their satellites like oh really like a bug bounty program yeah let will see how that goes i mean that's better than getting hacked and <laughs> having to deal with that i don't in my personal opinion every like government and stuff like that should have some sort of bug bounty program because i mean if you can get paid you know sometimes millions of dollars because you found a, a freaking vulnerability in uh you know certain companies infrastructure and stuff like that there's a plenty of people who would love to do that and just retire <laughs> from finding a bug somewhere um oh, there's but, this guy on youtube i think it might have been vice or motherboard one of those companies but yeah basically he was a felon he got out and no one wanted to hire him but you know he taught himself how to code and he does his bug bounty stuff full time and he just finds yeah. bugs like because sometimes yeah, you always hear about the million dollar prizes but mm -hmm. even if you find a small bug sometimes they'll give you like a couple thousand here or there and he yeah. just does that as a living yeah yeah there's always that as well do you have anything else <clears throat> <laughs> take that as a no elon musk 2020 oh my goodness <laughs> Jeez. that man anyway i'm not gonna go <laughs> I've, I've said enough <laughs> i think we'll end it there <laughs>